What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I am off to a rough start here on the lake today. Just drove up here to this nice lake to do some bass fishing today. And I, um, I dumped the boat in the water. There's my boat. <laughs> I thought that I had it hooked up to my trailer and I didn't. And um, he actually slid on out there on me, unfortunately. The wind is actually blowing out that way. And for whatever reason today, I am the only person out here on this lake. So, I don't know what I'm going to do. The water temp is going to be in the low 40s, high 30s, so I'm not really planning on swimming out there. There's nobody here at this bait shop, which is unfortunate. There's usually a lot of people fishing this lake, so it's just uh, it's a really untimely and unfortunate scenario that I am in right now. I'm just literally watching my boat float across to the other side of the lake. At least, though, the plug is in it. Definitely put the plug in it. It's not sinking, which is great. Um, so really, it's honestly just a waiting game now to see if anybody shows up who is willing to help me rescue that boat. I have no idea how long <laughs> that is going to take me, but um, I'm hoping for the best and I will definitely keep you guys uploaded. But while I have y'all here, I want to let you guys know what the plan is today. The plan is to hopefully try to catch a giant largemouth bass. Um, this is the time of year to catch some big bass. I've been wanting to target some big bass recently, but we've been so busy targeting other fish species that I've kind of neglected the largemouth and guys this is the time of year to catch the biggest bass of your life and it's something that I would like to do this year is catch the biggest bass of my life um, there are definitely some big ones that swim out here they can be very tough to catch but the plan is to hopefully try to link up with one today so as soon as we recover the boat we're gonna head out there and try to catch some and I hope that y'all are excited for today's adventure if so do me a favor hit the like button honestly just hit the like button to make me feel better about my current situation and the boat floating away it's it's really sad but anyways i'm gonna pull the boat trailer up up here and see if i can uh, get some help see y'all on the water hopefully soon well she's made it about 200 yards out there in the middle of the lake but luckily i've got some help on the way i'm going to be taking out a kayak to go retrieve that guy in just a second but just look at her she looks majestic out there but she looks lonely, but what I'm hoping is that she is landed on top of a big school of fish that we're gonna go catch because it hasn't really moved in a little bit, but honestly, it's probably just stuck on a stump. But either way, I'm happy that we're gonna have some help. I'm gonna be loading it up here in a second and uh, doing some fishing. But meanwhile, while I'm waiting on getting the boat, I've been noticing a lot of these shad come up just kind of dying near the bank. We've had a lot of cold weather. So I'm hoping that maybe that is going to be a positive sign of good things to come. Maybe there's a lot of shad out here floating around, struggling, dying, there's fish out here feeding on them. Time's gonna, time will tell, but first we have to go save the boat. All right. All right. All right, guys, we are fixed up. The guy who owns the bait shop here has provided me nice little kayak. He drove down to get this kayak unlocked for me and we are going to go and save the bass boat. The Cypress Express gave me a nice life jacket. We'll throw this guy on. Wow, this kayak is so much more different than the kayaks that I am used to fishing in. Um, you know, I have my old Jackson sit on top and then I have the Old Town um, trolling motor kayak. Both those kayaks are way more stable than this guy and you sit up a lot higher. Um, this one, I am literally sitting what well, feels like in the water. And uh, I'm not gonna lie, it's very tippy. <laughs> very, very tippy feeling. But also this kayak probably only weighed about 35 or 40 pounds. I definitely am feeling quite claustrophobic in this thing. And I can honestly see why, you know, maybe if this was like your first style of kayak that you ever fished in or purchased, why you maybe wouldn't love it. <laughs> this is pretty crazy and actually, feeling kind of nervous about maybe getting into my boat from this kayak. It's honestly going to be a struggle and I consider myself to be very, very comfortable and very proficient at uh, maneuvering around in the kayak. Okay, Woo. we are here. Oh, she looks kind of dirty. Wow, she needs to get sprayed off. Messy looking boat. Okay, we have successfully made it back to the boat and now we have to get ourselves out of this kayak into the boat and then we have to get the boat and then we have to get the kayak into the boat so oh shoot okay this is not going to be easy guys i'm just gonna roll into the boat 
If I don't roll into the boat, then the kayak is going to definitely flip. Ah. Woo. All right. We have made it back into the boat. Thank God we didn't flip this thing. Okay, now we have to get this kayak into the boat. No big deal because it's 35 pounds. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Making moves. We're almost on our way to going fishing today. Okay. All right, guys. We did it. We successfully rescued the Cypress Express from floating away out here on the lake today. And uh, we got the kayak loaded up in the back of the boat. Luckily, we didn't flip the thing. I was feeling very tippy in that thing. It was like the most uncomfortable I've ever felt in a kayak. I was actually quite nervous, to be honest with you guys. But um, anyways, we successfully did it. We are dry. We are about to return the kayak and we are going to get this fishing mission started. You know, this definitely wasn't the way that I had hoped this adventure would start, but definitely at least brought some humor to the day. And uh, hopefully our bad luck that we had starting off will turn into some good luck moving forward. We have a lot of daylight to burn. So let's see what we can make happen. Hope y'all are excited. Guys, I didn't even turn my camera on. I just made a pitch out because I saw some fish. I thought they looked like big crappie or, or white bass or something. They were schooled up, but guys, hope I can land this guy. Oh my gosh, look at the size of this gizzard shed. Holy crap. Look at how big, oh my gosh. Just started fishing, made like two casts at the school of fish. And um, you can see why I would think that that would be a white bass or a crappie. I mean, look at that thing. That thing is massive. He's absolutely massive. I just threw a blade bait out there. It's all I had in my hand at the moment and ended up snagging that guy in the tail. What a huge shad. I mean, that thing's gotta be close to two pounds. Look at that, guys. Monster, massive gizzard shad. That's the kind of forage that's out here in this lake that uh, feeds these big bass that live out here. Got one. <laughs> And yes, they are shad, and they're all just massive shad. I've never seen shad this, <laughs> shad this big. <laughs> okay, I just had to know what those were, since I've caught two. Uh, definitely just giant gizzard shad, holy crap. That is massive. Hey, did he eat it? <laughs> I don't think he ate it. In the mouth, though. This guy with this tail pinched is a 16-inch gizzard shad, and the one I caught before that was even bigger. Just look at the meat on that thing. I'll take that home and clean it for Jay. So she made me eat one like that one time. Okay, we are going to um, leave this spot and uh, start looking around to try to find the fish that are actually eating those giant sheds. There we go, fish on, fish on, fish on, fish on. Big one, big one on the little swim bait. Feels really nice. Stay on there, stay on there. What are you, what are you? Oh my gosh, he's pulling so hard. What is this thing? Oh my gosh, it's another shad. Oh my gosh, guys. I thought I had a monster. Dang it. Oh my goodness. What a shad. <laughs> oh my gosh. Guys, 
<laughs> that is a monster gizzard shed. Oh, I already snagged two today. And that's my third one that I've snagged, unfortunately. But I'm seeing some other fish that are on the outside of these shed down here that look like predator fish. And I thought I just had one. Dang it. Okay, that is a monster shad. I don't think I'm accurately matching the hatch with this tiny swim bait, but we're gonna throw this big shad back into the lake. Get back down there. I'm actually gonna rub some of that shad slime that's on my hand on this bait. It's better than max scent, guys. Gets you some natural shad slime, rub it all over your bait. <laughs> oh gosh, look at that. Y'all see that? Ugh. Maybe it'll work. I'm just gonna, yeah. Okay, let's get back out there. Please don't be a shad. Please don't be a shad. I don't think this is a shad, guys. Oh, finally, we got ourselves something that's not a shad. Finally. <laughs> let's go. I thought there was still some fish down there that didn't look like shad. Check that out. Woohoo! Look at that. Look at that right there, guys. Finally got something today that's not a shad. You can see the body shape is very, very similar to those big gizzard shad, but I knew I was seeing fish like up on top of those shad and on the back side of those shad, and I just didn't know what they were, but I guess it's big white bass. That is a really solid fish. Thinking I might actually throw him in a live one. I might take some white bass home today and eat them up. These fish are, I mean, that's an excellent eating sized fish. Looks nice and healthy. We'll throw them in the live well and see what happens, see if we catch any more of these guys. Heck yeah. I can definitely get down with some big white bass today. That is for dang sure. It has been tough fishing around the lake trying to catch largemouth. Um, I haven't completely given up on largemouth. I'm still trying to catch largemouth, but there's more white bass mixed in down there with those big shad. That would be so cool. Uh oh, please don't be a shad. Please be another white bass. Oh, he's pulling really hard. Oh gosh. Even if it is a shad, he is fighting very hard. Be a white bass. Be a white bass. Be a big white bass. I don't know, guys. It is, it is, it is, it is. It's a big white bass. Oh, it's a really big white bass. Oh my God. Net, net, net. Yes! Oh my gosh! It's a huge white bass! Oh my gosh! How big is that? Oh my gosh! How big is that white bass? Look at the size of that white bass. Holy flip, that is a big one. On that swim bait, it just kind of got mushy. Like I maybe I felt like I had run into that school of shad, but no, this guy had just gobbled it up. That's a beast! Holy crap, guys! What a monster. So the biggest white bass that I can actually remember weighing was three and a half pounds. I don't think this one's gonna be three and a half, but I think he's gonna be three pounds. Let's see, he's huge. I don't know, here we go. This is my jank scale that doesn't ever give me accurate weights, I don't feel like. Oh, get there. Nice, guys, look at that. Three pounds and one ounce. That is a beast of a white bass. Ho, 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 ho. How cool is that, guys? I've been out here struggling to catch largemouth all afternoon long, and I uh, came back over here where I snagged those first two shad to uh, just to get around some bait fish, and uh, man, I caught two really nice white bass. I'm gonna throw him in a live well with the other one. We're gonna get back out there and see if we can get another one. Ah! Oh, almost threw him back in the lake. There we go. He smashed it. He smashed it. That's gotta be another white bass, right? Smashed it. Are you kidding me? Oh yeah, another white bass. Another white bass just absolutely crunched that divine swim bait. Come here, big guy. Come here, big guy. Come here, big guy. Get up here. Woohoo! 
You think he wanted that little swim bait? These are some of the most fat, blimp belly looking white bass I have ever seen. Look at that. They're all just built like torpedoes. Oh my gosh. And they fight so hard. This is exactly what I needed. I I can't even tell y'all how much of a grind it has been out here uh, trying to find some fish. And um, you know, it's crazy. Just came back to where I started at and uh, throwing a little 3.2 inch, six inch divine swim bait. I actually have it bit down to like, I don't know, two and a half inches on a little small finesse jig head. And it's my third white bass. Oh my gosh, look how fat he is. He's not as big as the last one, of course, but he's a good one. And there's a chance that we could catch an absolute monster. Maybe even break a PB today. That's so cool. Let's get back out there. Okay, so that last fish tore that swim bait up to pieces, so I need to get a new one. I'm gonna dig into the six cents bait bag. If you guys are looking for a great way to store your tackle, whether it be your soft plastics or just whatever fishing gear you have laying around, I can't recommend these bait bags enough. They are awesome, especially for fitting all your six cents products in. So in here, you can see I've got my swim baits and at the top this is the one that i'm using right now to catch those fish the water out here is really clear this is a 3.2 inch size and the color is ghost ice minnow really no surprises here i've been throwing the swim bait a lot it's a really really good one and um so it's a 3.2 inch size and i think i'm gonna leave it full size um rigging up right now i i bit it down a minute ago um just because i felt like i needed to be smaller but i think i'm gonna leave it this size and I'm just pairing it up on this small little um, finesse little ball head jig head. And let me do that really quickly. Just threading it on there nice and straight. This jig head's a quarter of an ounce. It might be a little overkill. I'm fishing in 14 feet of water. So I'm just trying to keep the bait down there near the bottom where I'm seeing the fish at. But anyways, there you go. Just a small little finesse swim bait. And I am throwing it on the six cents ESP series spinning rod. This is a seven foot three inch medium light. It's really, really sensitive, super comfortable. I love this tapered handle. I'm not really sure what you would call this material, but it's kind of like a text, not really a texture. It's just like a kind of like a, a rubbery grip. I don't know. It's just super sensitive and comfortable in my hand. And of course I have a 2,500 size reel spooled up with 10 pound braid and I'm using an eight pound fluorocarbon leader just so it can be invisible down there to those fish in the water. So that is the gear y'all are always asking what I'm using in these videos and that is what I am using right now to catch these fish. So I'm going to get back out there and see if we can find ourselves another one. Oh gosh. Oh gosh, another one. Another one. Another one. Big one. Big one. Big one. Big one. Please don't be a shad and be a giant white bass, please. This ain't, there ain't no way this is a shad. This is a shad. This is the absolute state record shad. <laughs> this is a big guy. This is another really nice fish. I do not want to lose this guy. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh, it's a huge white bass. It's another huge white bass. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Net, net, net. Yes, yes, yes. Are you serious? <laughs> I think he's bigger than the last big one. Oh my gosh. Look at the size of this monster white bass. Guys, I talk all the time about how hard striper fight, but let me tell you guys, a big old white bass like this, it's just incredible the fight they put up. Oh, I can't believe it, guys. I have not caught big white bass like this in a long time, if ever. I can't really think of any other time I've caught big white bass like this consistently where they're all this big. I mean, look at how thick that thing is. I don't know if he's bigger than the last big one. And the biggest one we caught so far today is three pounds, one ounce. I'm gonna weigh him really quickly. Oh, he's bigger. He's bigger, guys, just barely three pounds and three ounces guys three three that is insane for a white bass big fat giant white bass out here today that is crazy on the divine swim bait so freaking cool i'm gonna throw him in the live well 
And honestly, guys, I don't know exactly what my plans are for these fish I'm putting in the live well. I'm keeping them, you know, oxygenated and um, in good, healthy conditions. You know, if I catch several more that are a little bit smaller, I'll probably release those bigger ones. I'm not exactly sure what the plan is yet with those, um, but I don't have any problem taking those big ones home either. That's just unreal. Real. What if those guys are down there eating those 10 inch gizzard shad? I know they're not, it's impossible, but it's funny to think of. And I definitely feel like we're around the caliber size white bass that I could definitely catch a new PB today. If we catch anything over three pounds, eight ounces, I'm calling it a PB because that is what I've remembered my whole life having a three and a half pound white bass as my PB. So that's what we're shooting for. We're going to get back down there and catch them. It's not like they're biting crazily like every cat's. It's not on fire. They're just kind of hanging out in the middle of those big shad. I'm not sure if they all just think they're all buddies or something or what, because they're not, it's not like a feeding frenzy down there. It doesn't look like, it just looks like a ball of shad and I'm just running it through them and um, getting, <laughs> getting my cheese smoked. So I'm gonna get back down there. There we go. 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 It's another good one. Oh yeah. Another nice white bass. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Yes. Look at that one, guys. Another nice one. He's not um, a giant fatty like the other two big three pounders we caught, but he's still a really, really quality sized white bass. I mean, bigger than what I normally catch for sure. I'm used to catching like, you know, one pounders, one and a half pounders here and there, but that is, I feel like that's like a one and a half pounder, but, uh, <laughs> you know, that's like usually the upper end of what I'm catching. So that is really cool, really exciting. Let me get another one. And I'm gonna keep throwing the swim bait for a little while, but I have another bait that I think will equally wreck them as well as this that I would like to try and see if I can catch them with. But for now, we're gonna chunk this bad boy back out here. We're going back to the boat and see if we can get another one. So this is that bait I was talking about that I wanted to try to see if I can catch some white bass on. This is the six cents little tail spinner. It's a super juicy white bass bait. And with these fish kind of hanging out near the bottom, this bait will stay down there near the bottom and also has that added flash of the tail. It's just a perfect little snack sized little bait that I think they'll crush. Tail spinners are great options in cold water. And uh, I've already caught some white bass on this bait, but I haven't caught any here. And um, I think they'll like it. So I'm gonna try it for a minute. There's something, there's something. First cast with it. Is it a white bass? You bet it is. You bet it is, guys. You bet it's a white bass. First cast with the gyro tail spinner. Oh, he's a nice one. Oh. Called it. <laughs> How cool is that? First cast with the gyro. I was kind of afraid that I would just, you know, run this treble hook into that school of shad and start snagging shad every cast. That was kind of my reservations to tie it on, but I was like, I don't care if I snag shad. I want to see if I can get white bass with it. But there you have it, guys. Got another nice white bass. He's got some icky stuff on his side. It looks like he'd been attacked by a bird or something. So I'm going to let this one go, but that's a nice one. It's like a two and a quarter pounder. Nice big fatty. This is what it looks like. I'm just throwing at these big blobs and just hoping that, you know, within those blobs of shad, there are some white bass hanging out with them. Okay, so update. I have completely lost touch with the fish that I was fishing for. All of those shad, as big as those groups were, they have somehow dissipated or swam off somewhere, and I have not been able to relocate them. 
So this lake that I'm fishing has got a lot of standing timber and stumps in it. So I've been idling around slowly with my side scan trying to find those big schools of shag. That's initially how I found them in the first place. And um, those jokers have straight up ghosted me. And it's so crazy. I mean, you saw how big they were. They're giant like two pound shad. Like how can they hide from this side scan? Obviously they can. Maybe they swim all the way to the other end of the lake, which I'm not really willing to drive across right now. But I don't know, I've, I've idled back and forth over this, you know, good, I don't know, mile area trying to find them and I just have not been able to. So I think with that, I'm actually going to call it a day. Um, I've been out here for like eight hours fishing. It may not seem like it. Most of my action came in like a one hour period, but I still had a good time out here catching these fish and uh, I'm excited to take them home, get them cut up and eat them for dinner. So I'm going to get all this stuff all put up. I'm gonna get the boat loaded up on the trailer. Hopefully I can keep it on the trailer this time and uh, gonna head back to the house. And I will see y'all when we get there. All right, gang, we are back here at the house now. I got those fish cleaned up a little bit ago. Here they are in the bowl, some beautiful pieces of white bass. They look very similar to striper. They're in the same fish family, so they have similar looking meat. And I have it chunked up in some nice pieces. And today I am excited to cook them in a way that y'all have been requesting for so long now. We are going to be beer battering our white bass this afternoon. It's getting kind of late, so hopefully we can get it done before the sun goes down. But we're using the Louisiana seasoned beer batter. I've already got it whipped up here in this bowl. I have my deep fryer here um, beside me. Hopefully I don't kick it and get my toes all burned up. But anyways, we are going to be beer battering these fish. Let me show you guys how that is done. We don't do it often. I'm not even sure if we've ever done that here on this channel, but beer battering fish is a remarkable way to eat them. And we're gonna do that here. So we have it all mixed up here. All you're gonna do is you're going to stick your filet down in there coat it it's a little bit messy on the fingers but it should be okay there it is right there beer battered fish and i'm going to drop it right here in the fish fryer and we're cooking okay it's sizzling i'm gonna get a couple of these guys battered up drop them in there and let you guys watch them sizzle down in this deep fryer give you all a look at these guys cooking before it gets too dark look at that those are going to be absolutely delicious i already know Oh, are you giving Buggy a hug? Oh, you're so oh, sweet. Look at you. Oh my gosh. Oh. We love Buggy. Give her a bug hug. Give her a bug hug. Give her a bug hug. Oh, wow, wow. Oh. Ah. Easy oh. with Buggy. Oh, be oh, easy. Easy with Buggy. Buggy, She's you're a such good a good girl. sport. You're such a good girl, Buggy. <laughs> Well, guys, dinner's ready. <laughs> I walked in on these. <laughs> I walked in on these guys being super cute. Had to show y'all. Uh, Buggy wants her tummy rub now. He rub her tummy. Rub her tummy. Be easy. Rub her tummy side. Be easy. Don't hurt her. Oh goodness. Rub her tummy. Rub her big tummy. She loves her tummy rubbed. He's gone. Okay. Jay, you want to try some of this fish? I do. I am so hungry. <laughs> I'm starving too. I it really looks haven't good. had anything all day. It looks good. It smells <laughs> good. Let me show you guys the plate. Look at this. This is what we're working with. It got dark on me, so I didn't get to show you the French fry cooking, but who doesn't know how to cook French fries? We have our beer battered white bass. That looks straight up like cod you get at Cracker Barrel. <laughs> We got our french fries and we have some country style baked beans. And we have a wild jay and cypress over here ready to try it out. Wild cypress bear. Wild cypress bear. <laughs> Go ahead and get you a bite of this, JJ. Okay. It looks really good. It does look, I mean, it looks great. Okay, here we go, Sally. You ready? Here we go. Watch mama. Oh my gosh. Whoa. That was like instant satisfaction. Isn't that so good? It's in that, that, that beer batter, like uh, fry, it keeps the fish on the inside warm. Mmm. That's kind of wow. thick. Yeah. That's amazing. Hey, those were big, juicy white bass. Oh my god. Those aren't your little like creek white bass you catch in the springtime. Those were Whoa. those were big guys. You gotta get more. That is so good. 
Da 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 Mm-hmm. That is fantastic. So yeah, that one was really crunchy too. Now I'm making one of beer batter some goldfish. Uh oh. We should beer batter a goldfish. What do you think, Sai? You wanna have a beer batter goldfish? So don't you dare. Don't you dare. Wow. That worked out great. All right, well that turned out really, really good, especially with how this video started. Jay, how did you feel whenever you saw my Instagram story and saw that the boat was floating way out to the middle of the lake? I was like, oh <laughs> my gosh. I bet you were thinking that like- That was a lot of money that just floated away. <laughs> yeah, imagine if I didn't have Scared to plug me. in. Oh my gosh. It's just sunk, the wind was oh taking it. It went a long way out there. I called you immediately. Yeah, and I was like, it's all right, the plug's in. I got a guy on the way, it'll be good. We're gonna catch the fish here in a minute. It's gonna be awesome. But uh, yeah. So nervous. Yeah, but anyways, got the boat back. It's definitely a learning experience. Um, we'll definitely try not to do that again. You know, if I was in a river situation, that boat would've been gone. I would've had to swim in and go get that thing. And today, whenever I was out there, that water was like 40 degrees, did not want to do that. I knew it was gonna be okay, so I just waited it out. And thankfully, was able to find some nice white bass, like the biggest I've caught in quite some time. And, Quite possible those could have been the biggest ones I've ever caught. I know those gizzard shad were like the biggest I've ever caught. Those guys were <laughs> enormous. But anyways, we are going to kick back, enjoy the meal that we have here today. Oh, Cypress. Cypress. Crazy guy. <laughs> so I hope that y'all enjoyed this episode. If y'all did, do us a huge favor. Hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel. We're, we're Colin J, and we'll see ya on the next one. Bye. Bye guys. Whoop. <laughs>